Dungeon uh, Doom Hands um, Let's Talk next, Lore, uh, a podcast. Game session. Tonight, we have a special guest, um, Tyler York, a.k.a. The Booter, and it's going to be funny. He can, he can tell uh, us a story about that if he wants, but the primary focus tonight is going to be how to build a player character. And then everyone has their own way of doing it. This is just one way that we suggest going about doing it. And I wanted to open it up first with introducing Tyler. Hello. And also saying, hey. do you have familiarity with playing uh, Dungeon Dragons? Um, I know you told me before you did. And mm. how long of a... S- break me... Th- co- let's go to like session zero. Did you have a session zero? Uh, I actually don't really know what session zero means. I guess I'll just, just to run through it really quickly. Yeah. Um, I've played in like three campaigns in my life. Um, all of which kind of ended probably as many D&D campaigns do with just sort of the group dissolving for, without it being at a particular point in the story or anything like that. You know, longest one was probably like three or four months. Uh, obviously played a lot of uh, Baldur's Gate 3 recently and, you know, back in the day I played Neverwinter Nights. So I'm familiar at least with like kind of the rule systems of D&D. Uh, and I'm excited to yeah. do this with you guys. I guess, um, or like a session one type thing it would be the very first time that you meet like your dungeon dragon, your dungeon master, and you would be the first time that you meet. You sit down with the whole players and you kind of go through and build your. You either build your characters or bring someone with you. Um, from my experience before uh, doing this uh, online version that we've been doing for several years now, um, session zero would be like, uh, I want to be a. I mean, Chris, maybe you have you have a better explanation since you've done session zeros before way way more than I have. Normally, I, more than the, the three. Way to um, come to an agreement about what you're going to be doing, what you're going to be playing, how you're going to be playing it, like the understanding of the rules, what everyone is and is not okay with thematic-wise or story-wise or what you're looking to get out of the campaign, how long it's going to be. Is all the details that you would want to know to make the commitment to play further in that game. I'm interested about with you is in this in this particular episode of uh, Let's Talk Lore. Is first, I want to know. I'm very excited to get a new player in, in the group. That's going to be awesome. We've been doing three years uh, of just the, the, the core group here. We need another person. And a fresh breath of fresh air, it's going to be fantastic. No matter who you pick to play, it's going to be awesome. But also, uh, you're, let's get into your character. I want to, I want to show people sometimes how you, how the dungeon master and the player should talk outside of the game nights to get their character into the storyline. It doesn't have to be much. So tell us your background story and sort of how you, what the your character. Yeah, and I actually think sharing kind of my thought process will be helpful. Um, So first and foremost, I mean, you guys are an existing game, right? You have a ton of backstory already. (laughs) We got on a call and you gave me the Cliff Notes version, which I really appreciate. uh, um, Because love your your channel, but I don't know if I could sit down and watch all of it in a row. Um, What I will say is that you basically, coming into a game would look to fit into the existing game like that maybe sounds obvious on its face but i feel like some people just show up and they're like i want to be like xyz and it's like sure you can but like does that actually make sense so at least for me that was important and then you gave me a lot of helpful sort of like context that helped shape the character uh we agreed originally so my character is going to be named boot r bot 5000 which is a homage to my fraternity nickname and all I'll say about that. Uh, but the thing that's funny about that is, um, you know, that actually gave us a kind of a cool character direction, right? Yes. Like we were going to be, it was going to be a robot. We were going like, how is that? Okay. So there's Warforged. Forge. There's like an option there. And how is, how are we going to like kind of play off of that? And so like for, if you're sitting down and you're just like, who do I want to be? That part's usually really hard for me. Right. Yes. If, and, And so having some guardrails and sort of some context really helps like you be like, oh, okay, so then I can do this. Um, And and you can kind of think of creative twists on it. So I I thought you handled that really well. I think that that completely depends on the player too. So like, I am okay with whatever you want to do. I like things fitting together like a puzzle. Like 
I, I, you know, if I were to put together a jigsaw puzzle and one piece is missing, I wouldn't be upset. <laughs> I wouldn't be really upset. But certain people, some certain players like to come in just rando. And I think like Matt, who you're going to meet, um, and he's playing, he's more of like a chaos uh, rando. He'll surprise you. He'll say, you know what? I got the guy. I'm going to come in. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll go from there. Um, but yeah, I think, I think uh, you know, the way that we did it, you have a little uh, session zero, if you will, with the with yourself and the and the dungeon master it doesn't have to be in front of the group. Sometimes I feel like those groups mm-hmm. session zeros um, are good because it, it introduces everyone to the story and everything. But I still think there needs to be a little communication one on one with the dungeon master when everyone is um, doesn't necessarily have to be at session zero, but just slowly in a, in like the next session or two, just to see how you like to play the game. So you'll you'll notice when I um, after the first game with you i will hound you to answer a couple questions what did you like did you like that did you want something else (laughs) every now and then i even like just randomly we'll go on vacation we'll miss a session i'll send uh, everyone group uh, group messages saying does anyone want to do a specific thing like besides aaron because i know aaron only wants magic items like that's the only thing that he Mm -hmm. that he or, or like to steal stuff but like i feel i feel like getting to know your character and their place that we're able to I didn't think of it that way, but the way that you articulated it, yeah, I think I think the the way we did it sort of fits your particular play style. I'm not sure. Um, Chris, did you have any yeah. um, any sort of like session zero type things uh, with your characters? Uh, I guess how was your session zero with our, with ours? You've had multiple players, so it's not like coming in. And- well, well, the first one was the we're starting something new. I have no idea what's going on. I'll just make a random cool character that I want to play that throw in whatever. But after that, I've always tried to do what Tyler is doing, trying to make it fit. Fit with the story. For like Lone Star, it's whatever the character is, it doesn't matter. It's like the story, the connection to, not spoiling anything, the connection to Talos that he has. And then Wilbur, the connection to the heroes is just trying to, I, I love that idea of just trying to be like a random person that you're going to meet along the story and they jump in me with both of those characters actually all all three three of your characters you've had you've had sidebar conversations Mm -hmm. with me about certain things so booter that conversation is pretty big for just Mm -hmm. anyone doing dungeon master so i'm glad that we did that let's go into your character's uh backstory yeah, real quick, one last note on, on sidebars. I, I love doing sidebars, especially in character creation, because you and the DM can kind of set up surprises for the party, which oh, yeah. is fun. Um, and that's a trick that I learned from my old boss a couple <laughs> about five years ago named uh, Nick Ingham. Shout out. He was a total chaos machine, and he, like, him and the DM agreed ahead of time for him to have some special item that he would roll 1d20 and he would get one of 20 different things right and like a lot of the stuff was outrageous for like a level two or three character casting a level five warlock spell for instance um so it's like you can set up stuff like that early on you can't do it when you know you're facing the dragon and the dragon's about to kill you this group then if that's if that's something that you wanted to do uh, no spoilers or anything on the Let's Talk lore for our for our uh, Doom Hand show, but yeah, cover your ears, Chris. We can talk. Call me. We've, we've done that a couple times. Um, mm-hmm. But so yeah, let's go. Let's go into your guy. So Warforge. I know that. Um, mm-hmm. I know that we had talked, and you know what's funny about your Warforge guy? I had completely forgot that. Chris and I actually, we I flew down to Florida and we did a, uh, just he and I uh, met a couple of the other guys supposed to come, but they couldn't go for personal reasons. So I went anyway and I said, screw it. Let's just do a, uh, a session 35 was what it was, which is why session 35 doesn't exist on YouTube because we, <laughs> we did it in person. Um, and we had gnomes, a gnome named Trapple and Griffin. And then we had mm-hmm. four robots. And they guess what? They were all they were all from Triguard, uh, and this they, I completely, yeah, and their regards yeah, linked to yeah, them. Completely forgot. Honestly, I swear mm-hmm. to God, forgot that and through my my notebook of like a thousand notes. And I was like, I hope I can get all this together. And then there it was again. 
uh, ironing out our, your story. So let's hear your, your guys' story. This is an awesome one. I'm really excited. I'm grateful you like it. Uh, so <laughs> the idea, and please stop me if I'm saying things that are spoilers, but the idea, right, is that um, they went back in time, yes. right? And now they're in a town called Striad. Yes where they're going to be soon attending the harmony ceremony and it's a town with you know gnomes and uh the other groups right i didn't write them down for some reason um but basically the idea here is okay how do we introduce a robot uh so i am coming in as a basically a robot like butler like a robot assistant for a wealthy gnome in striad I have no memory before the before my time as a robot for this guy. It's been my whole life. You could think of me almost like, you know, Jeeves from Batman or whatever, but just the robot version. And, you know, also a chef, also a bodyguard, but you know, my military capabilities, let's say, uh, are pretty limited and mostly to bodyguard stuff. This guy lives in a peaceful town. I haven't really seen any action at all in, in sort of war related things or fighting. Um, it's 150 years ago, so I was I am a Trigard manufactured Warforged robot uh, and combat robot, but uh, I'm going to be 150 years old when we go back to the present time, whenever That's, that happens. You know what? That summary of what we did is so much clearer and so much more articulate than the usual <laughs> uh, recap, I guess. Um, but yeah, so your guy is going to be... I think it's going to fit in perfectly. I am very excited. Mm-hmm. And you said... Um, it's so funny. I have such a good spoiler, not a spoiler, but I'm I'm not going to do it for you here. But I I know how, I know who your gnome is, and I know oh, cool. why he's no longer there. But you your guy would know this, and Chris also knows what the the, cer- the harmony the harmony ceremony is when the the, the ceremorphs and the gnomes in Striad have this harmony ceremony where the gnomes offer up bodies. For the ceremorphs to infect and that becomes their like symbiotic relationship in the town so that gnome whoever it is that we decide to create whatever his particular name i think he'll be a high and and what they, they like to do is they like to have a couple of the what makes some of the harmony uh, ceremonies um important is that they it gives the ceremonies an opportunity to climb the social status in the in the group so that they're not always these weird infected people they're also like a nobleman who's just so happens to be a ceremony so so maybe 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 one of your guys is one of the guys that's being offered that evening right so your guys is going to be it's going to be funny how you introduce your your character I'm pretty excited about that that was my little salt sprinkle well, on your so i felt like um you know to wrap up this uh short uh portion of of tonight's uh let's talk lore i think um when it comes to player character and fitting their stories in sidebars are important because that gets mm-hmm. that makes it an intimate conversation between you and the player and what they're like um and then sprinkle a little salt on their story i guess Right. Well, you you did a great job of it where, you know, so you gave me context. I threw out, I threw out like, here's what I want to do. You know, I, I'm for a gnome aristocrat. I don't really care what happens to him, but obviously something has to happen where I join the party. And then you came back and were like, all right, I have a plan for that. So it's like a bit of back and forth with the DM. I think it's great. Chris? I'm going to throw one other thing in there. The Those sidebars when you're adding your character in there and linking it in is one of the most fun places to world build as a player because you're already having that conversation of linking your character into the world so just make up the craziest stuff you can think of and try and convince your dm to let that be part of your backstory and be in the world and very next uh we're going to take a quick break and then on the very next session we're going to get into first off some roles for your character and then also um we're going to link this all back to world building, as Chris said. So, hold up, Chris, you hold on to that thought because you're 100% correct. Towns and islands and cities and places on my on my Wonder Draft map. I got oh, I got a booter. I got to send you the the, the map of the of the city of the of the world we're in um, called Unbegone, which is dwarf for skull. 
Um, it's going to be... <laughs> did you know that? Yes. Uh, yes, I did. All right, well, anyway, guys, uh, we're going to take a quick break. Hit subscribe for some more uh, world-building uh, um, advice. Uh, we'll see you soon in a second.